And welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. A lot of y'all are like me, and y'all have different Christmas traditions. And one of mine is, I always have a Christmas breakfast for my kids and grandkids. Sometimes we have to do it uh, a couple days before Christmas to make it work out. Used to it was Christmas morning. But everybody's growing up and everybody's having their own kids, so we try to get together as close to Christmas as we can and have our Christmas breakfast. You can call it a breakfast or a brunch, but we always try to have one. And I got to thinking, I, you know, my grandkids absolutely love homemade donuts or donuts, period. And uh, I thought, I'm going to make some donuts for brunch, our Christmas brunch this year. So let's go down memory lane. These were a donut that mamas could just whoop up pretty fast and make their youngins something sweet. Because back in the day, you really just didn't have sweets laying around all the time, but this was something that was easy and really good, and the kids looked forward to them. I know my kids always did. They loved these really easy, delicious donuts. It's not something you have to fuss about, worry about, and they, they come together really fast. You can fry them up really fast. Put whatever you want on them, a good glaze or confectioner sugar, cinnamon and sugar, and I guarantee you, <laughs> you're going to make everybody happy. So, let's get busy and get started on our old-fashioned donut. Now, our dough is going to remind you a lot of a biscuit dough, and that's pretty much what it's going to be. We've got two cups of self-rising flour. Now, not a lot of people say they didn't have self-rising flour back in the day. Um, yeah, they did. Self-rising flour was developed in 1840-something, I believe, and um, so it's been around for a while. But if you don't use self-rising flour, you can use all-purpose and just put you a teaspoon of salt and a couple teaspoons of baking powder in here. And I had a half a cup or a fourth a cup of sugar. And I've got a fourth a cup of milk. And I've got one whole egg. And that's all this recipe is. It's just about that simple. And you're just going to mix this up. Now, if your ingredients don't come together, with just a fourth a cup of milk, you may have to add just a little bit more. And I have a feeling I'm gonna have to add just a little bit more milk. And I end up adding another, probably fourth a cup of milk. Because you want it, your dough to come all together just like you're making biscuits. Now that fourth a cup of sugar did not make the donuts really sweet. And that's what I like about it. So you can see how dry the mix still is. So I'm going to add just a little bit more milk. You don't want your dough to be too wet, but you, you do want it to come together good. And as you're mixing it, you want it to, to come into a, a ball and it will kind of gather up all your dry ingredients. When you know you've got just enough water or milk in your dough, you'll know it because as you you mix it and you kind of knead it around, it will 
it'll just start picking up all the, the dry pieces and eventually it'll all come together. So you don't really have to use a mixer with this. You can do it by hand. And when I make this for the kids, I'll have to probably triple the recipe. But this is a good recipe for just a couple people, for sure. You can see how I've gathered up all the, the dry flour, the bottom of the bowl, so I know that my, my dough is good. And I'm just going to knead it a little bit. I don't want to mess with it too much and, and make my, my donuts tough. So it feels about right. Now I let my dough sit for about 15 minutes. Now I just, I'm gonna roll it out. And I've got my don donut cutter over here and it's a pretty good size and you don't have to cut your donuts out this big. But this is one that I, I bought this thing at the dollar store, or no, it was General Dollar. I bought it. Um, and they do, they make pretty good size donuts and of course it makes, cuts out the little donut hole in the middle too. But this dough is really easy to work with, just like you're cutting biscuits out. Just like that. And I should, after rolling the dough twice, I should be able to get about six, six donuts, six or seven. But I usually double this recipe. But for Christmas morning, it'll probably be tripled. And you've seen how fast and easy that was. There was no rising, you know, time or anything. And there's a lot of people that can't eat yeast or uh, don't like the taste of it, don't like any kind of, you know, yeast bread or donuts, yeast donuts or anything. So this would be a real alternative for that. And I can tell you a story. It's back in the early 2000s when uh, my youngest son was still living at home. We had a, a bad, horrible ice storm, and we was well, without electricity for a long time, and there was people that were without electricity for weeks and months. But uh, we ate a lot of fried biscuits, and <laughs> my youngest son absolutely enjoyed that. I think we made them every morning, and that's kind of what these remind me of, because we'd roll them in cinnamon sugar or confectioner sugar. We didn't even make a glaze for them, and we just, everybody just loved them. We got the old Coleman uh, cooker out. Somebody let us borrow, and that's what we used to cook with for a while till we got electricity, because you couldn't even go anywhere. I mean, everybody was just stuck at home for a good while. But we made it, and uh, we didn't do it without, that's for sure. Because we thought we was in hog heaven when we had fried donut holes and fried uh, donuts. So good. And I know a lot of y'all remember these donuts back in the day when they would take biscuit dough and, and fry it up for donuts. You can make you a, a good glaze for it if you want to, just like any regular donut and uh, dip them in that glaze and it'll be good too. So I pretty much, I got seven donuts and uh, seven donut holes. This is a pretty good cutter. I didn't give hardly nothing for it. Now, this leftover flour, I don't throw this away because there's nothing in it. There's no kind of, you know, any kind of food or anything in it that's going to cause it to go rancid. So I always keep it and I'll put it in a jar, a little mason jar, and I'll use it again to roll dough out either biscuits or a pie crust or something. I'm not going to waste it. I've got a bench scraper that I'll get out and I'll get the rest of this flour and put it in a jar and I know what it is, what it is and I'll use it again. Repurposing groceries are high, that's for sure. I hope y'all try this recipe because I think your kiddos will really enjoy it. 
And adults enjoy them too. Danny loves these biscuits or these donuts. And he loves fried biscuits. Now I've got peanut oil in my pot about 350 degrees. And this is um, the second time I've used this batch of oil. When I fry something, I always, um, it depends on what I'm frying. And this oil, I fried up some homemade tortilla chips um, to eat with some chili. And I didn't see no sense of throwing it out. So I strained it and I'm using it again. If I'm frying chicken or something like that, I won't, I won't save it or fish. But you can see that they're puffing up a little bit. This one right here, I done, it's hot. I sprinkled it with a little bit of cinnamon and sugar and I'm gonna put a little bit of powdered sugar on it. And they're so, so good. Such a treat. Whoops, don't do that. <laughs> Be careful and don't splash your grease over. Miss Lori knows better than that. You know, my favorite donut, um, let's see. My favorite donuts are from Krispy Kreme or Shipley's. Or more than that, homemade. But we don't eat very many donuts. That's why something like this is such a treat. And just be able to go in there and just throw them together that easy. So this is one of them good recipes for two. I know y'all like when I do my recipes for two. So this is this would be a good one because it only made seven donuts. So, uh, and the best way to heat these back up is put them in a little toaster oven and heat them back up. I'm gonna put them over here on my you don't want to get them too brown but you want to make sure they're done in the middle they're not really the prettiest donuts but uh, we're not worried about prettiness right now I'm just gonna put a few more and before my donuts get cooled off too much, I am going to put some powdered sugar. On these and I'll probably put the cinnamon and sugar on my other ones. I thought about making some glaze for them, but maybe next time. We like them with the powdered sugar on them because it just makes them where they're just they're just sweet enough but not too sweet. I've got a grandson that he's constantly asked me, Nanny, would you please make some um, what we call fried biscuits, fried donuts? He just loves them. Now for my Christmas breakfast, we're going to have. Uh, Biscuits and gravy. Mr. Brown will probably make his sausage gravy and biscuits. And we always had to have our chocolate gravy and biscuits. We will have sausage, bacon, and we'll have some fried up deer meat. My youngest daughter killed uh, some deer and uh, we are going to feast on that harvest. I'm gonna make some homemade uh, cinnamon rolls too. Of course we'll have eggs and uh, all that good stuff, but uh, that's mainly what we'll have for our for our brunch because that's what everybody loves and what everybody wants. And some fried donuts. Just kind of push them around and let them get a little, you know, golden on each side. This one's really funky looking. But he'll taste good. And I pretty much anymore, the only thing I use to fry in is either peanut oil or my rendered lard. I think personally that peanut oil uh, 
frying in peanut oil just makes everything taste good, whether it's fried chicken or whatever. And I'm just going to sprinkle some cinnamon sugar on these because that's what Mr. Brown likes. And I do love frying in the fresh lard. And of course, fresh lard is a lot better for you than anything else that you can use. But uh, I do like peanut oil for deep frying, most things. I do not have any vegetable oil, canola oil, here in my house. I just, uh, I don't use them. Now, I used to use them all the time. But I don't use them anymore. Look at that donut. This was the last one that I rolled out. He's pretty funky looking. But he'll taste good. So you see how easy, how quick And it would make the kids so happy to have such a treat. And it really did back in the days. Because you just didn't have all the junk that kids eat nowadays. So when Mama would go in the kitchen or Grandma and whip up something like this, you know, you just look forward to it. So we got them all cooked. I'm going to put some more powdered sugar on these. I'm going to get me a glass of milk and maybe Mr. Brown a cup of coffee. We're going to eat us a donut. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I just kind of threw this one together, but I wanted to share it with you because you all love the old-fashioned recipes as much as I do. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. And thank y'all for all the beautiful Christmas cards and the gifts that you've sent us. We love y'all so much. We'll see y'all in a couple of days. Be safe and God bless.